Most of us find communication really difficult, even very challenging. We know how often it can go wrong, how often there are misunderstandings, but why is it so difficult, so complicated? Well, I want to share with you a metaphor, a simple metaphor that many of my students find very helpful, helps them understand the sort of underlying stuff that's happening that causes this to be so complicated. And the example metaphor I use is that people are like computers. Now, in reality, of course, it's the other way around. Computers have really been designed to be like people, albeit metaphorically. Thankfully, we don't look like that. But you know what I mean. So people are like computers. Now, if you think of your typical desktop computer, then that computer has a base operating system. Now, there are many around, but for many people, it's going to be Windows or it will be um, Apple, Mac, iOS. If you're an Apple user, maybe you're using Linux. If you're working on tablets or mobiles, you might be using Android, you might be using Apple iOS. Nonetheless, the computer has a base operating system. And that system has a purpose, which is simply to control and manage the hardware and also the software resources within the system. And people are no different. We've got a base operating system. It's been around for millions of years. It keeps our heart beating, beating and we don't consciously need to think about it. Our lungs are breathing all the time. There are lots of automatic processes that keep us alive. But if we had to consciously think about it all the time, our days would be full and life would be very boring. There's also base psychological responses like fight and flight. So we share this commonality. So like a computer, we have a base operating system been around probably for millions and millions of years. Now, on top of that operating system in a computer sits lots and lots and lots of different software applications. So you may have Windows and you might use Word for your word processing or you might use completely different packages and there become thousands of possibilities of software applications you can put on your operating system to make your computer work. And as people, again, we're no different. We all run different software on our operating process. And that's one of the key challenges. And then also like a computer, as I alluded to earlier in the course, a computer, for example, the RAM, the random access memory, the bit of memory that the computer is using when it's processing stuff the vast majority of the time, typically equates to about 2% of the memory capacity of the computer because the main memory capacity is the hard drive, the storage of information. And as I've said, people are a bit like that. We are only consciously aware of about 2% of information that's going past us, passing through us at any given moment in time. And that's our RAM. Our conscious awareness is human RAM. Our hard drive is our storage, our unconscious. So the information still goes in and it gets stored and filed away and we'll talk more about that. But most of the time we're blissfully unaware of it. And so you can start to understand why communication is so complicated. Most of us, most of the time, if we're not really thinking about it, have a tendency to assume that other people are running the same software applications as we are. So when we communicate, our communication reflects our software preferences. The trouble is, in the vast majority of cases, they're not. They're running either slightly different or totally different. And you know what it's like with any um, software package on a computer. If you've got a newer version of even the same application, Sometimes you get some slight glitches and problems. If you're running a different package, you get even more problems. Right through to if you're running a very different package, you might not even be able to open the file on that particular computer. If you're sending attachments with emails is another great example. We tend to send the attachment in our computer software and assume that the person on the other end can open it. Now, of course, they probably can, or they've got some other software that will interpret it, but they're having to work harder to get the message. And so the essence, the real core essence of effective communication is to start to recognize what your preferred code is, but then start to be able to make judgments and assessments about other people's preferred code. And the real secret of communication is rather than sending messages in my code, you start to send the message in the code of the receiver. Now, nothing guarantees that people get it. Nothing guarantees that. I wish it did, but it doesn't. 
but what you will find very quickly is you will significantly increase the probability of them receiving the message and possibly acting on the message because they're not having to work so hard to understand it and they haven't got to put lots of decoding steps into the process. So the computer metaphor is a simple metaphor or analogy, whichever way you look at it, is a simple one, but for me it underpins the communication process. So let's start to look in a little bit more detail about what that might mean for you.